What's up guys? So, <clears throat> tried to make this video about three or four times already. I'm definitely under the weather and sick. Hopefully this is the last time I get to do it. This is the continuation on turbocharger selection and for me, my favorite um, 500 plus horsepower turbocharger for a 13B platform rotary application. Now, <clears throat> the budget stuff. I mean, when you get up into this realm, you need to throw the budget stuff away. This is, buying a turbocharger is literally the best dollar per performance item you can do on the car. Um, the next thing would be like ECU and uh, an intercooler. Sorry, I'm getting a bunch of texts all at the same time and they're, they're popping up in front of me. So, let me show you. I think is a great option. Jeez, I really wish all these texts were popping up. So, the S476, um, you guys might remember the Red FD by Seth. Um, he made 776 horsepower at 38 pounds of boost. This is the car that Joel Granis bought. And uh, due to oil dilution, um, essentially ripped the eccentric shaft in half. Um, <clears throat> I've never seen anything like that in a rotary, but this particular turbo at 38 pounds. So if we go, this is right about 29, 38, we're going right here. So this thing maxed out on a semi PP, let's say. 60% is pretty much where all the Garrett stuff ends. We'll put it right there. We're going to say somewhere around 115 pounds a minute of airflow. <clears throat> and that made 776 horsepower to the wheels on a, I believe it was either a Mustang or a Dynajet. And if you follow this line over, you're seeing it's very high efficient for almost the whole way through. So, 70%, 72, might have touched 74, but the majority of the pull is 70% up until red line. <clears throat> Seth's car came out amazing. Um, I know for a fact, as I have his map, what he did for ignition. I know what he did for um, that sort of set to make it reliable, and it was very reliable. Um, CDI is the way to go once you're at anything over 25 pounds of boost, anything over 8,000 RPM. That is the ticket for reliability. It will keep your plugs cleaner. Your plugs will last longer. You can run richer AFRs to keep cooling better while also having zero chance of detonation because you have the spark energy when you need it. Um, it also makes the timing, ignition timing more precise because instead of having a long duration dwell period, you're now at a very quick 0.2 millisecond, 2 microsecond, um, <clears throat> event period. And that's where all the energy is released, and you have no chance of a misfire going the wrong direction with a long spark creating a flame front and then trying to reignite or ignite more of that event the wrong direction. This is more so a problem in trailing if it can somehow backfire into the next event. So if your trailing plug is taking a long duration spark and your rotor, your rotor is rotating past it, it could possibly ignite the next event following since there is no fresh air event in a rotary engine. So <clears throat> going back to this, this turbo is a fantastic choice for that. Um, the surge line is pretty good. The width is pretty good. So we'll say on average, let's say we're looking for 600 horsepower. Your surge line is going to be somewhere around 45 pounds a minute. And you'll carry out to about 110 pounds a minute. So remember 45, 110. Okay. We're going to go over to old school S475. Okay. 
These things were known to make a boatload of power back in the day. This was the go-to before everything got higher tech. And if we look, 45 pounds is still going to make 30 pounds of boost before surging. <clears throat> and we follow that line out, and we're not maxing up the turbo. And on top of it, we're almost 76%, 74%, 74%. We're still making 60% out at 100 pounds a minute. This could get you on a rotary 700 horsepower, realistically, at the 100 pounds a minute. On a reciprocating engine, we normally take our pounds a minute times 10, and that's about what we're going to see is a maximum horsepower for a turbo. On a rotary, pretty close to about 0.7. <clears throat> And what's cool about this one is as you go up and boost, the efficiency plateaus are still pretty wide. So you're not losing a ton of efficiency to get up into, let's say, your 40 pounds of boost. You're still getting a really, really wide power band until your choke line catches you, which this is going to happen in every turbo. So I would say this thing is a sweet spot for pretty much everything. It's a fantastic turbo regardless of its age. And you get an S472. And again, we're going back to our 45 here. Still surging right at the same spot. And if we take 60%, we're going to be right out here. Right at 110. So the overall width and response and everything on this S472 is pretty much... So we can look at our, our percentage values on average. So we're going to say, come through about here, 78. We'll go here. These are very similar in overall flow. If you run a lower boost, I would actually say the S476 is a little bit better which is weird to think about. This one somehow shifts up the efficiency even more so. 80% at low boost, which is the exception. But even at pressure ratio of three, so 30 pounds boost, 29 pounds boost, you're getting into you know, 78% efficiency for a very large margin, 76 for a very large margin, 74 for a very large margin. So. This is a badass turbo for a great pressure ratio of compressor to turbine. Because the turbine is the same for both S472 and S476. Now, <clears throat> I've given you guys numbers, and I want you to remember 45 and 110. Here's another option. This Garrett bad boy... If we were to go 45, it's right here, and 3, you're already at 65 and then 68% efficient on the compressor where the other one has a surge line. You are up in that thing, and it's already singing by the time that the S472 or S476 or S475, for that matter, come on. So... You're at 68% efficiency by the time that the other turbos are surging. This thing will come on significantly quicker, even though it's a directly in between all the sizings. Then we go look at our 110. 110, we're still going to be not at 60% because we're hitting our choke line first we're still going to be in the realm of probably 71% by 110 pounds instead of 60%. So the top end is going to be significantly better. The difference here is all these lines are a very quick slope in power band. So your overall efficiency will be higher throughout the majority of this power band on 
either of these S472 and S476. And then you have to look at one more thing because check this out. Let's say we take 80 and three bar, right? We just eclipsed past 78. Now we go back here to 80. 80. Three bar. We've just eclipsed 78. But we still have a lot more to go in high efficiency. This is still going to be 77%, then 76%, then 75 all the way to 71% at the end here. So your top end on this one, you've crept away. And overall, the flow pattern of this turbo, they're very similar. They're almost like a direct relation. Um, the only real difference is this S472 and S476 have a much less efficient turbine side. This G series will have a surge line, like I said, 68% efficiency at that same 45 pounds a minute of airflow. So it will be less likely to surge, which means it'll come up earlier in the power band. I would assume minimum 500 RPM sooner at the same engine. But here's the crazy thing. The turbine efficiency percentage of this turbo is 77%. It is the highest percentage out of every Garrett lineup. In fact, I don't think an EFR or any Borg Warner or any Precision or Zona or anyone who publishes these numbers gets close to this one. This is a 77% turbine efficiency for the size. And it's a 7582 turbine wheel. That would be the X-Ducer is 75. The Inducer is 82. Remember, these are switched around when we, when we size them. The inflow of the turbine is going to be the larger one in this scenario. On the compressor side, the inducer is the front of the turbo. The exducer is the larger parameter that's swapped on the turbine side. So in precision speak, this would be a 75 millimeter wheel. And it's 75%, I'm sorry, 77% efficient, which is mind-boggling. These wheels on the S476, S472 are slightly larger, but they're probably in the realm of 70%. So these will have a still a higher chance of um, higher likelihood of drive pressure or back pressure to become an issue as we climb in boost. It's pretty cool to think about all this stuff. Uh, I'm amazed how close the four of these turbos are to each other. And if you really, I don't know, if you really want to push something that's crazy high boost, this would be the choice for that. Um, they're all fantastic. There is not a single one of these four that is a bad turbo for a rotary. This thing wakes up and goes. There, there's no downside whatsoever. Um, the one thing that really amazes me is, you know, I personally own this guy. And the reason why is because I wanted to be the guy who can still get away with, you know, 76%. Here, actually, I'll be closer to, let's see, right about here, this line. So I'll be barely touching the 78% at the top end on wastegate pressure. So my wastegate pressure comes along here, this line. And on kill, I'll be in the very top of this 78% on this line. 
so it's about 3.2. I could I could not have sized this better for my overall usage of the vehicle. Um, I'm just really impressed with what Garrett's been doing with the G series and to have a surge line this vertical at such crazy low flow numbers is just it's amazing to me because previously you'd had to I mean this is a, a bad example but previously you'd have to wait because you have if you smack the throttle say you're 5,000 rpm you'll surge the turbo it's gonna go choo 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 until anything happens and <clears throat> Now these things are coming on by, you know, 68% at that same 45 pounds a minute, which is just wild to me. So it's going to be really fun. I'm looking forward to maxing it out. And I will have a speed sensor. And if needed, I will send the turbo out for custom balancing up to about 130,000 RPM. Um, but we will cross that bridge if we, if we need to. So, hope you guys go enjoy that. Um, I didn't want to go too deep into the actual like calculation side of things. It loses most of you very quickly. But um, for a fourth attempt, because I've been sick, I think that'll try to help you figure out where you should be looking on these graphs and, and kind of how to analyze them a little bit better. I know people are going to disagree with me on my choices for turbocharger and, and my reasons for it, but I really weigh heavily on the turbine side, especially with the efficiency of the Garrett stuff, and I think that's the game changer. That really is the way to pull heat out of your exhaust system as efficiently as possible. That's worth its weight in gold. So that's it for now. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Cheers. See ya.